Oh my god, well that was scary. My stream deck broke, so I had to do that manually. Hopefully you can hear me and see the game and all that. that... Huh! What an exhilarating way to begin tonight. I am Mark, the man behind the curtain, and we're back with Suzerain doing the Reign of Terror, in which I try to become dictator rather than doing everything properly because the first time I tried that and I ended up executed. Alrighty, so, uh, I'm gonna go to full screen. Let's not dilly-dally. Alright, so, last session. What happened? Well, I'm in the middle of trying to, uh, create a new constitution. One that gives me crazy powers, and I'm doing it all under the guise of protecting democracy. I met with the, uh, Supreme Court judge, I think the head judge, whatever his title is, Supreme Justice, whatever. And, uh, he was like, you know, we could declare a state of emergency, and you could do whatever you want, as long as you don't give yourself any more powers. And I was like, nah, I'm not doing it. D-Rexel, also known as Drexel, maybe, says, go bigger or go home. And that's the, that's the proper attitude. Let's not... Uh, screw around here. So, what's in the news? Actually, was there anything else I forgot from last time? Oh yeah, I paid for Sergei's children's education, so that's good. Oh, and I banned the young swords. Uh, that might seem counterintuitive because I want the young swords patron organization, the National Front Party, to like me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm hoping that the National Front is gonna be like, hey, we're willing to support you, but you gotta ban, or unban the Young Swords. And they'll be like, oh, okay, I guess I can do that. Even though I'm planning on doing that already. So, uh, yeah. What's in the news? Rain leading the reforms, that's true. Preparations underway for the annual Benfi Festival. Alright, whatever. Reds under the bed saying, we go in full communist or fascist? Uh... I'm going authoritarian first, communist second. I'm going to try to go communist, but uh, if I have to choose between being communist or being dictator, I'll go dictator. I'm calling this a Stalin run, so. All right. Oh, and Mr. Hats for Cats, throwing out the bits. Thank you kindly. Saying me normally. Yeah, communism is bad. Me during this playthrough. Some Russian I don't know how to pronounce, which I assume is supporting communism. All right, so we're working on the uh, the reforms of the Constitution. Okay, we know this, but we got stuff going down in Lackavan. Oh, dinner with the business council members. My strategy here is to like, tell them everything they want to hear and then betray them later. So that's the planning. Grim Jowl, thanks for following. We are in Lackavan to work with the business council to assess weaknesses in the economy. Simon organized a dinner with the affluent economic figureheads of Swordland. When we arrived, the streets were bustling with activity, even though the atmosphere in the country was tense. Lackavans didn't seem very worried. Together with Walter Tusk, the asshole, Edith Agnock, who seems fine, Mikhail Avon, who I don't know, and Simon, who is my Minister of Economy, we entered the renowned Asteria restaurant by the coast. A short blonde man who's some embroidered pocket red manager greeted us and waved his arms in excitement as he told us how pleased he was to have us in his establishment. Beating with pride, he led us to a private room and got us seated at a large table, covered for the occasion with a maroon tablecloth. We were quickly served by a group of servers. Makes sense. Walter spoke as I started taking our orders. I recommend the Lackavan Salmon, President. It should be Mr. President. You have to taste this local delicacy here, the best in Swordland. Why, yes, I'll take your advice on what to order. It means I can screw you later. Okay, uh, and I'm gonna order rice, I guess. I don't know. I, hopefully that doesn't decide the fate of the country, what I order at this dinner. The servers placed glasses in front of us and served bread and water. After they were done taking orders, they quickly left us alone in the private room. Mr. President, I didn't have the possibility to thank you for coming today. Your presence means a great deal. Indeed, sir, it's an honor to dine with you. Uh, it's great to be here with the members of the Business Council. We should thank Simon for organizing this meeting. No need for that. I hope everyone enjoys the evening. Simon gestured at the expensive-looking red wine bottle that one of the servers had just brought to the table. Mr. President? 
I'll nod. No words are needed. I nodded at him. He started to carefully pour some wine on my glass and waited for me to taste it before filling it up. I took a sip. It was bitter. Honestly, it tasted like any other wine. How is it? Is the taste your liking? It has a sour and delicate vegetal character. Is it Arcasia I'm tasting? Fuck. Uh. Do I want to make a fool out of myself? I'm gonna be honest, it tastes like, ah. Uh, nah, I'm gonna try to wind it down, literally, I suppose. What? No. Oh, okay, well, good work, idiot. <laughs> uh, you may be tasting the oak from the barrels, or maybe it's the gooseberries. It's definitely not Arcasia, Mr. President. Simon filled up my glass. After filling everyone's glasses, Simon stood up and <laughs> God damn it, I'm so pissed off I misidentified the wine. Now the country is gonna collapse. Okay, it's fine. I'd like to raise a toast to all of you here today. We're meeting here in difficult times, but I believe that with hard work, cooperation, and trust, we will get through this period as well. I'd like to thank Mr. Rain again for his decisiveness when it comes to economic policies. I'm sure we will stop the recession. I also thank Mr. Tusk for being with us today. His presence is an honor. And of course, my colleagues from the Business Council, Miss Agnock, Mr. Avon, without you, none of these would have been possible. None of this. Let's drink to future cooperation and growth. What a prosperous Swordland. Everybody raised their glasses and toasted each other. After a couple more minutes, the servers arrived with our meals. The food tasted amazing. Walter was right. This place must have been the best place in all of Lackavan. So, did you find the food of the best fine dining restaurant in Lackavan? Or how did you find the food? Okay, got it. Uh... I've already kind of, I'm, uh, I'm not going to try to be fancy. Not a big fan of fancy food, but I must admit this is very tasty. Says the man visiting one of the finest restaurants in Southern. Well, I wasn't, if this wasn't my choice. You invited me here, so whatever. Yeah, exactly. Edith, thank you for having my back. Don't blame it on him. Mr. President didn't choose the place. How are things going in the Maroon Palace? The pressure must have increased after you attended that funeral. It's tough, but our work on the new constitution continues. We all hope so. As we conversed with Mikhail, I heard Walter raise his voice in an apparent argument with Edith and Simon. We both stopped to listen. And Temple of the Gods, thanks for uh, subscribing for four months. Thank you very much. It does help keep the lights on, so very much appreciate it. All right, so there's an argument. Arcasia knows the right way of doing business. Their approach to the world is real and raw. I'd prefer that cutthroat approach in comparison to the niceties. Well, I mean, it's a nice country to visit, too. I have traveled there often on business trips. Their attitude on all countries are nice to visit if you have the cash. I'm like an Edith. Chairwoman of the Central Bank of Swordland. Hmm. Okay, I, I like the cut of her jib. Edith, okay. Uh, exactly. How about the people that don't have the extra cash to spend? What about disease? What about death? What about everything that's wrong with the world? These are matters beyond our lives. We should focus on the betterment of ourselves and enjoy what we have instead of worrying about what others don't have. Old men plant trees whose shade they shall never sit under. An idealist at heart, you know what they say, being a romantic idealist is easy when you have the time and the money to be able to just sit down, relax, and dream. Yeah, that's fair. Walter is taking us down the rabbit hole again. By the way, I mean, by the way, I saw that the construction of the railway has already started. I have my concerns about the company, but I hope they do a good job. That project will surely boost our economy if done correctly. The mood is already becoming positive. I have to congratulate Mr. Rain for starting such a massive project. Uh, I'll be nice still, I guess. Thank you for your support, Mr. Evan. Of course. Mr. Hall also deserves credit, of course. Our great economy minister. Is there a joke coming? We don't like Simon Hall? Why? I thought you were... S I thought you said you were great at economy. He laughed. Okay, I've heard you... 
bought a new villa, Simon. I don't comment on rumors, but I'll make an exception since we are among friends. It's true. Where is the property? Seems to navigate potentially dangerous waters. It is a small seaside villa at the outskirts of Conrad. It's just a modest house with a swimming pool and a small golf course. Yeah, modest with a swimming pool and a golf course. Great city to buy real estate in. Conrad is seeing a surge of investments. I'm going to play the, the dutiful capitalist here. Underhaul construction made a fortune constructing houses there. Where there is demand, there is supply. The market rules supreme as always. Okay, what a dick. Edith, who is sitting to my left, gently put her hand over my arm for a few seconds. Come on, let's not talk about finance or politics for now. We came here to relax. He turned to Walter and Simon. Isn't that right, gentlemen? He, they nodded at her and took a sip from their drinks. She leaned slightly f uh, towards me. Okay. So, Mr. Rain, why don't you tell us what's behind that strong character of yours? I've heard they had a difficult life in Dare, is that right? Uh, what would Stalin do? He probably wouldn't comment on it, right? I try to leave my past behind and focus on today. It's who we have become them. Yeah, I like that. That's what I say after a good night of drinking. Okay. I never met your family, Mr. President. How are they doing, if you don't mind me asking? They're doing great. We have no problems. That's great to hear. Your son must be very proud of you. Family is everything, and my advice would be to make sure that Frank has a solid relationship with you. He is your future after all. Why do you even care? That's a little angry. Um, he's going through the teenager period. It's difficult to, to, to connect with him. He's a little shy. Wish that was my son's biggest problem. Huh, <laughs> okay. Darren seemed to be doing fine. I saw that his yacht party in Benfi made the local news. Oh my god, I gotta... Uh... Well, the rascal didn't even ask for permission to use the yacht and just took it. He basically stole it. Oh my god. Good news is that I finally convinced him to go to university. He will study economics and lack of in business school. That's a good... I mean, this dinner is beginning to seem a bit pointless. That's a good choice. Having a degree in Swordland separates you from the rabble, and we especially need more people who understand economics. Maybe your son will be a great future economist. I wouldn't count on that. But I agree that we need more econ economists in our politics. It's unfortunate that Edward Alf or Wald Alfonso was the only leader who actually studied economics. He turned to me. Not that I mean anything against you, Mr. Rain. Um. <laughs> I'd love to call it Mikhail here. Uh, what did you just say to me? I'm gonna have you now. I don't have a secret police yet, so I should wait. Uh, I'll I'll be nice for now. Alfonso was an inspiration for all reformists. He was. He truly wanted to transform this country to a modern nation. His term was very difficult, though. He got destroyed. A correction. It wasn't his policies that destroyed him. It was the old guard. Of course it was. They are a big threat. He threatened their economic power base over the country through a vast privatization plan. They removed him and backed you after. Well, there's stuff with the conspiracy theories. I think we've had enough drinks. Everyone went quiet. After a long silence, followed by some chit-chat, Walter ordered a bottle of whiskey. That's one good-looking bottle. The waiters brought you one of the finest Arcasian whiskeys. It was time for a toast. Uh, I'll give a toast. To an equal society without class differences? That's not going to play well here. To a constructive and beneficial future. May our differences be set aside for a good future. All right, good enough. They say hope dies last to the future. Raised. I think it's time we call it a night. Edith stood up. Most of us were all a little tipsy at this point. I want to thank you, Mr. President, for joining us. You and Simon for putting all this together. Thank you, Edith, for joining with a bunch of ugly rich men. <laughs> That's definitely not me. The 
president of jokes. Thanks for being here. All right, I think I, I, think I really killed that, that dinner. President. Mr. President. A moment alone, please. He called me inside the small VIP lounge. I followed him inside. Usually, the Lotherberg spokesman doesn't directly comment on the administration, but I'd like to say a few things since this was uh, this was a special evening. I'm all ears. It seems that you've decided to tackle the old guard and the new constitution. That is brave indeed. We could be a strong ally in breaking that status quo. If you fulfill our requests, we can help with the assembly and perhaps the court. Walter lit a cigar and took a few drags before continuing. Many in the group are disappointed in the economic direction that you took by promoting an inefficient planned economy. Uh, I'm certainly interested in maintaining a good relationship with Lotherberg. In that case, we can move towards a better future together. He looks me in the eye. We had a deal about the first mega infrastructure project. You broke that promise and didn't award the contract to underhaul construction. This action led to a huge disappointment in the group. What can be done to amend the situation, you dipshit? If the administration were to pass a private corporation tax cut and privatize both healthcare and education, it would do wonders in the attitude of Lotherberg towards the administration. Privatization can lead to many good things, President Rain. It is certainly an opportunity to raise further money inside the welfare branches. From our end, the previous mishap would be cleared and confidence in the new administration from the business community would be restored. Uh, request a bribe? Uh, do I want to risk this? I mean, it's not going to fall for this twice, right? I will make tax and privatization decisions objectively. Can't promise you anything. Oh, let's not be hasty. The recession will end if Lotherberg is on your side, pre President. Why can't we all just be friends? Maybe we can. I'll see what I can do. Wink, wink. Excellent. Glad to hear this. The group wants a private corporation tax cut and privatization in healthcare and education. Does this lock me in? That's the question. Because I'll tell him whatever he wants to know. I'm just not sure if, if I say this to him, is it gonna is it gonna prevent me from uh, doing anything? That is the question. Uh, that is too much of an ask. Too much. I have to reject. That's a shame. I did offer you a peace branch. There was an awkward silence. Either way, President, we are here and always ready to work with you if you change your mind. Don't forget that. I'll think about it, but not now. Walter left and Sergey came to pick me up into the car. I entered the car and we drove to our residence in Lakivan. Sergey took the seaside route. Car bomb attack in Avery. That's bad. And Master Thief Esquire, thanks for the more bits. I like rice. Rice is good when you're, uh, yeah, the Mitch Hedberg quote. Good stuff. Wait, what am I looking at? I got distracted. Uh, school poisoning. Oh, God. Uh, it's them balloons again. And what's in the news? Bill on the rights of workers being drafted. That's good. President meets with business council. Horrible mind disaster, 112 dead. God damn it. A budget allocation of the government of Swordland. All right, this is this is big. This is important. The preparations for the new government budget were finished. Most of the cabinet gathered in the White Room for the important occasion. Nearly half a year had passed since my inauguration. The cabinet looked overworked. Welcome, uh, and now the moment we've been waiting for, it's finally time to discuss the government budget. I'm quivering in my loafers with excitement, Mr. President. Sadly, Pete, Gus, and David won't be attending this meeting. 
They are working on the upcoming trade agreement with Gwelyn and Agnolia. May the Lord be with them. Here I came in really disguised at all. Before we begin, is nobody going to mention the ban on the young swords? However much their political aims might differ from the administration, surely you must agree that freedom of expression must be protected at all costs. Nia, I mean, Miss Morga is right. Nia flashed her an appreciative smile. I myself strongly disagree with the young swords' politics, but even I believe that... He broke up, she noticed that Lucy and Simon and Yosef were looking at her and Nia in stony silence. Ladies, let's leave the extraneous chit-chat for afternoon tea. Ooh. That's a pleading look. Okay, yeah, that's bad. If you have problems with the band, call a separate meeting with me. Simon started loudly shuffling some documents around. All eyes turned to the Minister of Economy. I'm gonna nod. I'm always gonna nod when 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 appropriate. Nodding is good. Today is a big day. We must. <coughs> oh God! We must prioritize our spending wisely in order to achieve the goals we set as a government, while maintaining enough political support. If I may add promises were made during the election. There are three options regarding the budgeting of the four main branches of the government. It's either we increase, maintain, or decrease the funding. Increasing... Yeah, okay, I think I can figure this out. Uh, is it possible to maintain as much state control as possible? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna skip this. We should prioritize the most critical branches. Which branches are critical? I'll decide that later. We can go into debt, but that's a bad idea. Which branch should we discuss first? Let's talk healthcare. Healthcare system is vast and provides free services. Okay, I already know what I'm gonna do. So just, you know, talk it up. I don't care. Uh, what about education? Blah, 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 blah. Education is important. We know this. I agree with Lilia. Swordland is Swordland. Okay. Lilius is right. We pave our own path. I'm just going to agree with Yosef because I want him on my side and not murdering me. Let's discuss law enforcement. Everything's falling apart. It's a giant mess. Over a field, tackling internal corruption is of far higher importance than increasing our police presence. Ah! Uh. Anti-corruption police? That's not gonna work well if I'm corrupt now, is it? Uh, I need the Minister of the Interior on my side. Is she here? Yes, Lilius. I agree with Lilius. It's time to hear opinions on the military. What is there to hear about? I already voiced my opinions. Rumberg is coming whether we like it or not. I agree. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, military good. I'm completely on board. I don't need to listen to this. I agree with Yosef. That's my line for everything. Uh, Rumberg is a real threat. We need to be ready. Very good talking points from everyone. Well then, the time to make a decision on the budget has... Consider it with care, Mr. President. Simon placed a stack of papers on my table. All right, healthcare? Gonna maintain it. Education? Gonna maintain it. Law enforcement? Gonna increase it. Military? Also gonna increase it. And I think that is it. Military and police. Let's begin the crackdown. Let's make sure I pick the right things. Okay, education, maintain, health, maintain, yeah. Beautiful. I had finished allocating the government budget to the satisfaction of some cabinet members and the dismay of others. They and I knew this would define a significant part of our term. We have a deficit on our hands, but we'll need to resort to debt to finance investments. This is worrying. Agreed. Well, then, let's start with law enforcement. Lilius and Nia were both smiling. Thank you for this decision, Mr. President. I knew you would see a reason on this, considering our internal security threats are an all-time high. I still disagree with Ms. Graff on how the money ought to be spent, but the increased funding is certainly a step in the right direction. Any statements on the matter, sir? No. Very well. 
Uh, let's hear the Minister of Education. Keeping the same budget will just result in the same problems. However, I prefer this over a decrease. I'll try to reform the system with my own resources. Yeah, I mean, we all like education, but what can you do? And thanks to Wondercat for following. Very much appreciated. Okay. Our future depends on our children. Education is the first step in the uh, fight against ignorance, I, I suppose. All right. Uh, my expectation is they maintain education services with the same budget. Uh, yeah. It seems that we have no other choice but depend on what little we have. Okay, yeah, whatever. The military is next. It is an honor to serve with a president that respects the military. Trust me, with these funds, our armed forces will be better than ever before. I mean, they'd better be, for God's sakes. I'm putting money into this shit. You have kept your promise to focus on the military, an honorable and fitting decision. Lucian seemed as if he was about to say something, but looked down at his notepad when Yosef eyed him. Uh, the military is on the top of my priority list and always will be, rest assured. I knew I could count on your decision-making, Mr. President. Yosef leaned back in his chair. Let's hear from Mr. Benowol. I can't say that maintaining the funding is negative, but I don't think our services will perform any better. Welfare must remain a priority for our term. There's no other way around it. Your opinions were noted, Pascal. Your task is to improve the care of the country. Which will be difficult to accomplish without an increase in funds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That covers all branches. Each minister will approach you with their respective policy requests and expectations over the next year. Thank you for your time and participation in this significant moment. The meeting is concluded. Dismissed. Let's be cold and calculating. The ministers bid their farewells, some excitedly, others dejectedly. The cabinet slowly dispersed from the white room and the budget for our term is concluded. Nineteen fifty four Sordish Government Budget. After a marathon eighteen hours of negotiations, the Sordish Government budget for the current term has been finalized. Excellent. Good, good, good. Uh, okay, we got 87 signatures so far, and we need a lot more than that. Oh, so that takes us to the end of turn three. Right? Is there anything else I am uh, forgetting here? I guess not. Let's, let's do it. Chapter two. A new swordland. Okay, what's in the news? Lack of in League of Owen March. Bog's Landian Navy forces Agnolian drillship to retreat from Hellish Land. Arcasia fires an ICBM. Okay. Hmm. All right. Benfi Regional Airport overcrowded. Yeah. Education in rural regions needs improvements. And Red's under the beds asking we should probably support women's rights still. Yes! As far as I'm concerned, there's no reason not to. Massive network of BFF priests discovered. Okay. Man, the blues are not gonna like me by the end of this playthrough. It makes me sick, but what can you do? Magnolia offshore drilling near Hellish Land Island increasing. Okay. Military equipment outdated. Yeah, we're working on that. Uh, that's that's a priority. Workers' rights. I'm gonna sign the hell to this. Uh, it's gonna kill the government budget, but fuck it, let's do it. It's important, damn it. Workers' rights. New law on workers' rights. Rain signs, workers' rights bill into law. Workers' rights bill signed. Okay, yep. I'm sure some were in favor, some weren't. Okay, budget allocation of law enforcement. 
I was in my office reading reports and ministries about the current situation of the protests. My next scheduled meeting was about the law enforcement budget with Nia and Lilia. So I heard some knocks on the door. Nia entered and took a seat in front of my desk. Lilia, or Lilius was absent. Okay. Uh, she's a minister of justice. I like her, but I can't work with her because she's too good. So... Yeah. Lilius will be late. Apparently there was an urgent matter in the Ministry of the Interior that she had to attend to. Shouldn't take long. Uh... What urgent matter, I suppose? She said something about supply distribution for the police forces. Nothing major. Okay. I returned to my reports and Nia smoothed back in an errant strand of her hair. There was an awkward silence. Man, I... I like her, but... I gotta remember, I'm Stalin. And, uh... Uh... Gotta go, uh... Gotta go to Man of Steel, even though it's difficult. While we wait, why don't we have a little chat? A chat about the so-called reform package. I had my reasons. No need to go on defensive, but I will say this. Yeah, we're repeating Soul's mistakes again. This is not what we were elected for. Huh. <laughs> uh. All right. You don't agree with my decisions. Was I not clear enough? She sighed. I keep thinking about it, and I come to the same conclusion every time. There is no way I can get behind this. Don't forget that I have a vote in the court. Trust me, I am doing all of this for the well-being of Sorland. She opened her mouth to answer, but there was a knock at the door. Lilius Graf entered the room. So Mr. Hats for Cats saying, Money and budgets are merely constructs of the bourgeoisie to control the masses. Agreed. Minus two, that's just a number, baby. I hope that I'm not interrupting your conversation. No, 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 we were just discussing a few things. I am sorry for being late. There was an important matter at the ministry. Just a small dispute over who should get some supplies and the major. Well then, let's go straight in. We will provide a brief update on the situation of law enforcement. Go ahead. Now, yeah. the Ministry of Justice and the Supreme Court is working in close collaboration with the Ministry of the Interior to address the protests in the country. I must add that thanks to the hard work of our judiciary, the law enforcement forces assigned to my ministry are doing their jobs efficiently. Okay, whatever. Nia is all about justice. Lilius is... I think I can work with her. This came as a pleasant surprise to many in the Ministry of the Interior, since it was not even one of our campaign promises. And for that, all I will say is bravo, that was an excellent decision. Agreed, the Ministry of Justice, we are very happy with the decision as well. The backlog of the court cases are dwindling, and we have started to fulfill the needs of the current situation. Great. Certainly a step in the right direction. I did what was expected of me. That's all. Of course. Well then, let's move on to what we're actually here for. Due to the budget increase, we can start doing much more as the main branches of security in Swordland. However, a decision has to be made about the budget balance between the Ministry of the Interior and the Ministry of Justice. Exactly. When deciding, you must look at the bigger picture. I believe you'll make the right choice and pick the Ministry of the Interior. Yes, I will. Why should I pick the Ministry of the Interior? The Ministry of Interior is much more significant and important government agency that is in need of the funds, especially during these times where there are many protests in the country. Good luck prosecuting criminals or going through local government laws without enough judges. I am ready to make a decision. The funds will go to the Ministry of the Interior to be used to improve the police and local governments. Is this the best call? Uh, yeah. Nia is too good, and I am evil. A wise choice. I was expecting you to be different, Mr. President. A brief moment of deliberation passed. Nia got up from her seat. I must return to the Ministry to implement necessary changes. 
Very well, see you, see you soon, Nia. I need to have a few words with Mr. President. Nia smiled and left the room. I have a proposal. We've been battling with terror for a long time now. I want to put an end to it. That is why I am proposing the formation of a secret state police. This would be a new force that would be in charge of handling internal security and intelligence matters. The primary aim of this program is to detect and prevent subversive elements before they take any harmful action against the state. If you accept, this will give our administration power to handle the threats more discreetly as well. Very well, form the secret state police. <laughs> we got the KGB, baby! Excellent, I will start the prep work. You are making good decisions after good decisions today, Mr. President. I will be in touch. Lilius got up and left the room. Master Chief Esquire saying we could be in charge of it. Almost a committee on state security. Exactly. You know what's going on. Protesters target sacred symbols. Oh my lord. Gibbonair calls president to action. Recession is growing faster. Hmm. Well, shit. These things happen. Secret state police. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, regional investment decision. Uh, I I don't know what what effect could this possibly have. Uh, um, I don't suppose anyone has a. Uh, Um, I guess Lauren, Bergia, England. England is close to Ignolia, so I don't think I need to do that because I'm kind of ignoring that region. Bergia is. Where's Bergia? Is that the center of the country? No, Bergia is next to the Bludes, I think. I'll do. Lauren. Where is... Oh, Lauren's right there. Oh, and that's the one that had the airport that was kind of fucked up. Okay. Ooh, minus three budget. Oh, dear. An evening walk with Monica. Our favorite place for a stroll was the nearby Capitol Park, the largest green space in all of Horse Holsort. Before the children were born, we had spent many an evening engaged in deep conversation along the Riverside Promenade. Another favorite path wound through the woods behind the presidential housing complex to a private pond where the children could swim in the summer. I was told that Sol himself had it built, the benefits of being president. Monica met me by the door, and we put on our coats and hats, as you do. I was going to suggest we walk towards Seoul Square, but the guards told me it's been closed for yet another protest. I wonder who they are protesting this time. The young swords are taking it too far. Old grudges die hard, I see. This is different, a nastier breed. In any case, where shall we go? I'm not sure Capitol Park is a wise idea in this climate either. Nonsense, we have our guards. There's nothing to be afraid of, and if I get shot, I, I, you probably can't get shot, right? If you say so, let's go then before the children get home. I informed the guards about our route, and we left the house. The guards followed us with a black cadilla as we exited the gates. Walking briskly, we reached Capitol Park in minutes. As we entered the park, Monica broke the silence. So, how was your day? I'd rather not say. Uh, nah. I want my wife to like me. Is that so wrong? Um, paperwork in this meeting is the usual nightmare. I don't know. I imagine some of that might, or some might find that stimulating. What about your day, darling? Oh, it was fine. I caught up on some reading while the children were at school. As we reached the river, we saw Ainos Krona, the former Minister of Justice, walking in the opposite direction. I remembered that Nia Morgna used to be his vice minister. He gave us a quick nod of acknowledgement. Ionis? Ionis? I don't know. 
had once fought hard and strong against Sol's judiciary reforms. But after years of the government blocking his every move, he gave up on his ideals and became part of the administration. <laughs> what did our ideals really mean if they could be changed so easily? What about the people we idolize? Evelyn also came around for tea. She says hi. She was feeling rather low, though. Apparently she and Pete had a bit of a disagreement. Pete's in the doghouse again? How did it happen? Apparently Pete had too much whiskey, as usual, and didn't behave when Evelyn's father was over for dinner yesterday. Oh, God. You know, Pete, what do you think of this? That's Pete, perpetually pickled. I'll have a talk with him. Good, Evelyn seemed close to tears. Being married to a shrew like her would make anyone turn to the bottle? Oh, God, no. Aren't you glad you and I don't have those kinds of quarrels? Monica didn't say anything. Oh, my God, that's not a good sign. You know Evelyn hasn't been the same since what happened to her at Holesword Post last year. You remember how she got fired for supporting Alfonso? Pete tried everything to get her job back, but it didn't work. A sad day for journalism and free speech in Swordland. I completely agree. A sad day indeed. But enough about the Vecturns. I also spoke to Janice on the... Who, who's Janice? Who? You remember my friend from university? We were in the Swordish literature class together. A few years younger than me, red hair, scar on her forehead. We had dinner with her and her husband once or twice. Neither the name nor the description rang a bell. I still don't remember her, but go on. Anyway, she's been working as an executive assistant at the Violet Pictures Film Studio. She recently became pregnant and asked her boss for paid maternity leave. And guess what? She was fired for it. After asking for maternity leave, how terrible. Or that's terrible. Uh, they immediately replaced her with a younger, less experienced man. The son of an executive, no less. That is utterly ridiculous. I'm happy you agree with me. As it happens, another friend works for a television station that's hiring secretaries, so I connected the two of them. That doesn't solve the deeper problem, though. Exactly! I knew you'd be on the same page. Women in this country are still seen as wives and mothers first, human beings second. They're harassed at work, underpaid, blocked from positions of power, and those are the lucky ones. The fact that there are still places in this country where little girls like Deanna are denied the right to an education. Go on. These little girls and people like Janice need someone to speak on their behalf, a role model, a successful woman. We were right in front of one of the park benches that lined the river. Monica gestured to it and we sat down. Which brings me to my point. I know that the mayor of Anrica, Curtin Leste, will be delivering a speech at the annual opening of the Benfi Festival. My wish is to take his place and deliver the speech instead. Leste was one of Sorland's most influential politicians. He had started his career in Benfi before rising to power in Anrica. Benfi's current mayor had personally invited him to make the opening speech. Replacing him with, uh... Monica would likely anger him. Not enough to cause a major incident, uh, but enough that he might not support me in the assembly. I mean... Okay. Lido Amon, thanks for following. Welcome to the party, pal. Okay, I want to base the speech on women's rights in Sorland on the oppression and discrimination we face every day, on the basis of our sex alone. I want our voice heard, and this festival is the time to do it. I just need your blessing as my husband and the president of Sorland. Monica's eyes were blazing with a fire I hadn't seen since we were students. She wanted this badly, but I had to be careful with my promises. Uh, you have my full support, always. And that is why I love you. Thank you, Anton. You have no idea how much this means to me. Monica beamed at me, her face flushed with excitement. One way or another, I want to contribute to this country, no matter what happens. We are not weak, Anton. We are only as strong as long as we stand by our ideals. Ah. My ideals are, are flexible, but she doesn't know that. This is why I had married her. This passion and resolve. I should have anticipated that sooner or later, she would join me in the political arena. We rose from the bench and started making our way back home. Otherwise, you will end up like... Oh, that guy. I own his Krona. Exactly. He backed down on his ideals, and now everyone knows him for what he actually is. 
At that moment, we passed Iona's Corona again. He was on a nearby bench, taking a smoke break after his own walk. Monica plastered on a big smile and greeted him. Then he turned back to me. Spineless. Oh my god. Monica, I've never seen this side of you. If that was said, people remembered I Ionis, Ionis, how would they remember me? Whatever he had done, whatever ideals he had lost, he must have had his reasons. Would they remember me as a true patriot or a reformer of the country? What would they write about me in the history books? Hopefully that I was a necessary evil. All right, let's get back to the house for dinner. Of course, lead the way. Monica smiled. You know, I believe I will. When we arrived home, I called my secretary, Olivia, and asked her to inform Mr. Leste that Monica would be making the speech in his stead. The sun began to set over the horizon, bathing at the clouds in shades of orange and pink. Explosion and dare. Good Christ. Debt. Yep, okay. Smolak condemns Arcasian soldiers in Lesbia. Chancellor Hegel condemns military buildup in Lesbia. Okay. General Staff commands the administration. The General Staff convened at Camp Strongarm. Okay. A session much shorter than usual concluded with a positive military analysis of Sorland's field capabilities. The Chief of the Armored Forces, Valkyrie Kruger, made a public press statement praising the administration and its efforts to strengthen the most important branch of the government, the military. All staff generals co-signed the letter. Great. So the military is on my side. That's all I wanted. And that BFF bombed a police station. <sighs> Alright, so what else we got? Uh, we got railway issues. And discussing of changes to the tax system. Okay, so let's deal with uh, construction issues first. The L1 ra Railway construction... Created the perfect uh, <laughs> created the perfect opportunity to visit the Green Technological Nerve Center of Sorland. Dozens of electrical engineers from the city were part of the electri er, electrification upgrade of the rail track. The main purpose of our visit was to solve construction issues that began to endanger the deadline. The Gel Sword Research Council let us use their facilities. The rectors weren't interested in our affairs. What's a rector? Simon looked a little more stressed than usual. Gus was also here to find solutions. He eyed me for a while. There was also a message of support from the mayor of Anrica, Curtin Leste, who was grateful for the L1 investments. Okay. We are scheduled to finish the project in late 1955, but I have concerns about the construction due to progress being slower than expected. I expected some issues even before we started this. The corporation is full of fossils that don't know how to solve problems re reactively. The SSC reported that they have been slowed down due to uh, several areas on the way to Gelsort having a potential for landslides that could endanger the workers. My, or, or my argument is that they should have known about it. Huh. Do we have a case of project mismanagement? That is my theory because they knew about the zones the track passes by. The old SSC construction managers think they are untouchable and that they have no obligations. Okay, they're out. They're done. One of the important issues in their construction and management team... Okay, the other could be outdated construction methods, but we aren't sure if that contributes to the issue. State-owned corporations like them never really receive performance penalties, and that's why they are incompetent and lack responsibility. The incompetent manager should be fired. This is a disgrace. It would be a drastic measure, but not unreasonable. Replacing them with competent managers would do. I agree. The shakeup could have a positive result, but what if the SSC overall boycotts against this? <sighs> the state owns the SSC. They can't retaliate and bite off the hand that feeds them. I don't expect them to bite back, but maybe they can further slow the construction by protesting. Simon took a deep breath and continued. One way or another, we have to solve this issue. This can lead to real complications down the line otherwise. We can either give the construction managers more money, warn them, or replace them. I say we replace them. Yep. Replace the construction managers with more competent people. We're going to clean house. It's good to see that failure isn't rewarded and punished. 
Oh, yeah. Okay, and punish. We will find more competent people through our networks. I'll make some calls. Got good contacts that can be added to the potential candidates. That should be it. Good that we have figured out a way to move the process forward. The meeting ended. The three of us toured the advanced research and development divisions in Galsword. The day-long visit ended with a dinner involving the most important people in the city. Many of them were scientists. Later, we made our way back to Holesword. Okay. So that's one problem maybe fixed. Uh, the new managers are getting used to their positions that have indicated a little Okay, yep, yeah, so no one was yet, but uh, whatever. I've made my point, God willing. Young Swords members arrested and face terrorism charges. Excellent. Alright, so now uh, privatization, I believe. Right? No, this is taxes. Yeah. We were at the top floor of the Business Council building, which had a great view of the beautiful Lakivan. I looked outside from the tall glass windows. The Markian Sea stretched as far as the eye could see, and it was dotted with many ships towards the horizon. They were mostly cargo ships carrying precious goods in and out of Swordland. Tracing back the paths of the ships, I looked at the harbor. Lakavin was home to one of the largest harbors in the entire continent. Many dockyard workers were unloading or unloading the containers. Work never stopped here. The door opened. Simon, Mikhail, and Edith entered the meeting room. Mr. President. Mr. President, so nice to see you again. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon. Simon put down his bag on the table and started collecting his documents while others slowly took their seats. Mr. President! Before we start, I would like to mention some rumors that I heard. Workers' Rights Act did not sit well with many business holders, especially the first section about minimum wages. I heard the same. This has caused these businesses to lose millions of ren just overnight. Unfortunate, really, especially during a recession. Hmm. I don't care about rumors. If someone wants to say something, they can say it to me directly. Neither of them responded. Yeah, there it is, you fucks. Simon waited patiently. Once everyone was ready, he adjusted his glasses. First of all, I would like to thank everyone here for their work on our tax system reform. We all know how complicated our current system is, and this work wouldn't be possible without you. He turned to me. The ultimate goal here is to end the recession. Before I move ahead and start formulating a plan, we need you to determine our direction, Mr. President. We have a few possibilities as a result of the work we have done so far. We can increase, maintain, or decrease the taxes for large corporations. I believe some of us in the room have a few strong opinions about this. In parallel, we can increase, maintain, or decrease the taxes for small and medium businesses. Let's start with the large corporations. Uh, I just want to get through this. I know what I'm going to do. If we increase taxes, not an option. Our economy's in shambles. It'll destroy the economy. We could balance it by decreasing taxes of small businesses to put some relief on them. I see. I'm not sure that's a good idea. I'm sure. I know what I'm doing. Enough of this. I will go a step further. Increasing their taxes will have disastrous results and it will make you an enemy of them. Trust me, Mr. President, nobody wants to make an enemy of them. It goes both ways, Mr. Avon. Of course. I am ready to make a decision. Very well. We'll increase the taxes for large corporations and balance it with a decrease for small businesses. You are making a mistake. This is going to have outrageous effects on the road. Enough! The president has made his choice. I think we're going to be just fine. Well then, I have taken out of our action. I'll put it to implementation as soon as possible. We will be giving people some relief by enacting tax breaks for small and medium businesses. And there will be an increase for large corporation taxes, which will help us sustain our balance. Simon organized the stack of papers he had in front and placed them back into his briefcase. All right, that's it. Enjoy Lackavan, you idiots. Budget minus two. I like seeing that. Okay, so... Tax cuts for small and medium businesses. Protesters are not traitors. Ah, I'm pretty sure they are. I gave a speech about it. Red youth calls for peace. Good for them. Large corporation tax increases are uncalled for. If you don't like it, you can leave. 
And Smolok threatens new military incursions targeting BFF. Oh, God. What a dick. News from Rumberg. Queen Beatrice Livingston calls Sorland a threat to world peace. God, I hate her. Queen Beatrice Livingston appeared on TV to call Sorland not just a threat to peace in Eastern Mercopa, but a threat to peace in the entire world. She condemned the riots and police violence in Sorland, also expressing her worries about the direction Sorland is headed. Okay. I'll deal with her. Don't think I won't. And let's visit a school, shall we? As part of the planned program, we arrived in Liren to visit a middle school. The prestigious Torn Hill School was situated, or situated close to the suburbs just outside the city center. The building was flanked by two hills, each beautifully dotted with shrubs and flowers. Lucian, Syria, Kiri, whatever, and I got out of our cars and met at the entrance. Our presence had not gone unnoticed. Apart from our guards, there were at least ten reporters following us around. That must be the principal. Right this way, sir. The principal was a man of short stature, with a bushy mustache and a pair of glasses. He approached us quickly, but was stopping by the security guards. They started patting him down and searching him. Wait for them to finish. Mr. President, such an honor to meet with you. Shake his hand. I'm not gonna smile. Welcome to our humble school. Let's begin. Excellent. You must meet Mr. Gallade. It's a or Mr. Gallade. Mr. Gallade. I, I my pronunciation changes every single time. It's a pleasure to meet you. And Miss Walda, so good of you to come all the way out here. Thank you. At the entrance, the school's motto was inscribed on the wall in giant letters. Istrensis or something or other. Education is the premise of progress in all societies and all families. Yeah, I'd say I argue with that. We walked through the gates. There were many students lined up in front of the stairs to the main building. The school band started playing as we entered. All the students immediately snapped to attention and turned to me. It looks more like a military institution than a school. Exactly, that's what we pride ourselves on. Discipline is the utmost importance in our school. We need more educated people, not soldiers. On that, we are aligned. I can assure you that our students are very well educated. In fact, our school is one of the top ten middle schools in all of Swordland. Now we will watch the students take their daily student oath. A boy and a girl went up to the stage and grabbed their microphones. The students turned to the day of histories. Nope, they're just nobodies. Okay. I am a sword. My strength lies in my blood. I will respect our honorable elders. I will protect the young. My life belongs to Sordan now, and it will belong to it forever. I will always follow the guiding light of Colonel Soul and the Great Swords. A Morgna Westcor, Vector and Sista. I'll nod at them. Always nod. That's my uh, guiding principle. I almost forgot the words, which proves the uselessness uselessness of this oath. No one even remembers it after they graduate. If you wish to follow me, we will take a look at one of our classrooms. Through the hallways, we made our way to classroom 7A. As soon as I entered, the whole classroom rose up and snapped to attention. God, they are a bunch of weirdo fascists. Sit down, please. The students sat down. The same boy and girl walked up to us. These are our top students and our top class. This here is my son. The boy came before me and saluted me like a military officer. Tell Mr. President what you want to be. Mr. President, I want to be a general, sir. I am ready to sacrifice myself for my country and you, sir. I will do whatever I can to not let that happen. Thank you, sir. The principal squeezed his son's shoulders and the boy looked up and smiled to his father. He patted him on the back and sent him off to a seat. The cameras flashed. This is simply ridiculous. You are raising soldiers here, not students. I am so sorry. I will immediately perform disciplinary actions. <laughs> that, uh, this principal's an idiot. Uh, okay. How about you, young lady? What do you think about this? She is our top student in the school. Our excellent grades are to... I didn't ask you! She bent down and gently addressed the young student. What do you think about your school? It is between us girls. Hi! I'm sick of having to knit, and so will the boys learn science and chemistry. I'm smarter than all of them. Why do I have to take these stupid handcraft classes? Shh! Do you know who you're talking? Shut up! Let her speak! 
Uh, my math and reading scores are the best in the school, but they won't let me take the classes I want just because I'm a girl. I want to be a scientist, not some soldier's wife. You heard her, Mr. Principal. You will make the necessary changes at once. As you wish, sir, at once. I will personally check back and ensure that the changes are made. Yes, sir. The cameras flash once again. I looked around the classroom and saw a large portrait of Colonel Soule. Uh... I'm not going to say anything. Well then, unfortunately we're almost out of time. We have other meetings to attend to today. Thank you for the warm welcome. Mr. President, Lucian, please go ahead. I would like to speak with the girl alone. Very well. <laughs> Alright, thank you for visiting our school, sir. Come on, class. One, two... All the students in the classroom yelled, but the boy whom I met was the loudest. A Morgna Westcore. Vectern Sista. After another round of photos, we departed. Zed the Golden Skycat saying, A scientist for a better Soviet Republic. Sword limit, I should say. Yep. <sighs> we need equality, or communism has failed. Mr. Hats for Cat saying, these students have the stink of the fascist on them. They would be good for an earlier warning platoon to be used as a tripwire. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. We need to, uh... We need to fix them. President of Business School in Liren. Member of Assembly arrested. Oh my god. Uh, maybe that's not a great thing. If we're trying to get their help. Increased police budget restores stability. Okay, that's something. Briefing on the progress of the educational reform. Okay, let's take a look at that. We were still in Liren, staying at a modest guest house uh, for state employees. Kiara, Kiara set up a meeting with me and Lucien to go over her plans for education reform after our school visit. Lucien was seated across from me at the table, going through documents, Kiara, whatever, into the room. After the visit yesterday, I couldn't even sleep thinking about that little boy and girl. I have never been more sure of my intentions to reform our education system. Lucien took off his reading glasses and put it on the table. I agree. An educational reform is necessary. Exactly. Those students have to repeat that same soulless propaganda every single day. They are being brainwashed at an age when their minds need to be free. On top of that, young girls are denied the same opportunity as boys. They're forced into the role of a housewife before they even reach puberty. Nothing's changed since I went to school. Women like me, Lilius, Nia, even your wife, we have to study twice as hard to receive the same university education that you and Lucian took for granted. Is that the kind of country you want your daughter to grow up in? Mr. President, we need to bring change. We need to free the minds of these young people. They are our future. Very well. What do we need to do for an education reform? We need to keep politics out of the curriculum. Saul should only be viewed as a historical figure. Children shouldn't have to repeat his name every day. This is actively poisoning young, bright minds instead of thinking for themselves. Still to th okay, yep. Yeah, I I'm on. I'm on board. Reform the education system. You will not regret it. I will get to work immediately. Now that the decision was made, let's move on. Very well. With no change in budget, the ministry was left to its own devices. We made some tough choices, but still lack additional funds. Therefore, we are investigating if privatizing education would draw enough funds to conduct investments. Ooh, I don't like privatizing education, but I'd rather do education than health care. What are the advantages of privatization? There aren't many, but it would give us sorely needed funds and increase competition among schools. It would go against our overall economic strategy of a planned economy. Uh, no. Keep education solely a matter of the state. We need to prevent interference from private interests. Will do. That should be it for now. I will get to work and report back later. This has been a very productive day. I'll be returning to Whole Sword. Thank you for your time. Ab Abnormal B. Thanks for following. We dispersed after spending nearly the entire day together. I took a moment simply to breathe the fresh evening air of Lyrium. 
I have felt Kama here somehow, but I would have to return to the Chaos of Whole Sword soon enough. What's in the news? Richter, Reigns Reform Committee is all talk, no action. Shit, I gotta talk to that guy. United Contana launched a second satellite. Good for them. You started work on the education reform. That's good. Also, I think the economy improved by a point. Did it not? I think we started off at two and now we're at three. So that's maybe something. Okay. I got a meeting with Gloria about the Constitution. Um... Yeah, this is going to be tricky. Because i got to pretend that I'm in democracy. No, but she's a soulist, isn't she? I, I think so. Uh, she's part of the USCP. She's a conservative. Uh, okay... I think, I think she's a soulist, isn't she? Oh yeah, I remember, I remember this lady. Strong critic of Edward Alfonso. Yep, okay. I think I know how to play her. We're going to exalt the role of the USCP. We're going to say that uh, soul's the best at everything. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hello, Gloria. Good to see you here, Mr. Rain. It was a small, neatly organized office. There were small figurines, photos, and plants around the place. It had a homey feel, unlike my own assembly office when I had worked there. On her gesture, I took a seat. The chair was very uncomfortable. I... How are you doing, Mr. Tory? Miss Tory? I'm fine, Mr. Rain. How are you? I'm very happy to see you, Miss Tory. It's been a while. Indeed, Mr. President. He smiled. So, how does the presidential chair compare to the ones in the assembly? Not as good as you imagine. I'm sure it doesn't give you the back pains the way ours do. Anyways, let's keep this simple, Mr. Rain. We both know why we are here. You want me to give you my support. I don't see why the backbone of the USP would support your rushed reforms. Don't you realize they go directly against the wishes of the founder of this party and the state? Uh... The reforms are not against anyone. It's all in the name of democracy, you idiot. <laughs> in the name of democracy. Even though you owe everything to Colonel Soul, I think you never liked him, nor the party he built. How dare you suggest I never liked Soul? I am a proud soulist. I think, at least. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. And hi, Loey T. Thanks for following. Welcome to the party, pal. You claim that, Mr. Rain, but the soulists already know who you are working with. Whatever you intend to do, you'll be facing quite the opposition. That's all I can say. You must understand that these reforms are a necessity. Let me explain. Ow. Um. The USP is a party that knows how to react in changing times. We must lead the nation into the future. Yes, the USP is everything. That's for the party to decide, not you. I seriously do not know if the Conservatives would be willing to support you at all. I must say that I expected some reform regarding the appointment of ministers. I'm surprised you're ignoring the large support behind that, but moving on. It is unbelievable that you are taking away the immunity of the justices, a big mistake. A president that has the power to impeach justices will be very dangerous in the future. 
We shouldn't damage the separation of powers. This is something I cannot accept. On top of all that, you are removing the possibility of your own impeachment. Giving yourself absolute immunity while in office. That's bold. I don't see anything democratic here, Mr. President. Can you? This will benefit the party. Uh... Yeah, this will benefit the party. Who are you kidding? This proposal is designed for your own benefit. Okay, she's a little harder to sway than I than I thought here. So what are you thinking about? Are you ready to make changes to your proposal or should we keep talking past each other? might remove my own impeachment. If I control everything, then I can't imagine this will be a big deal. Uh... Yeah, okay, I think this is my plan anyways. I believe that my original intention was to demand everything and then give up a few things I'm okay with. I will remove the changes about the impeachment of the presidents. Change the reform. Finally, the proposal is starting to make some sense. She took a long look at the proposal on her table. You know what? I feel extra generous today. I believe I can give you the help you require. Here it is. I do have one condition. I want you to cancel that speech you were planning for your wife at the Benfi Festival. Mayor Leste is not only popular in Benfi, he's one of the most influential members of the USP. We wouldn't want to upset him, would we? Fine. I'll have Monica taken off the schedule and let him speak. Wonderful. Just don't forget, Mr. President, the Conservatives will be expecting a lot from you. I will be expecting a lot from the Conservatives as well. I can get you the signatures needed for the proposal. I'll talk to the other Conservatives. Okay, great. So, I got the Conservatives on board. I hope there won't be any surprises, though, Mr. President. Your lack of faith in me is disappointing. I assure you, there is nothing you should be concerned about. I'll hold you to that promise. I just hope you won't flirt with the Melanivis... Whatever. Your promotion of Eastern values was troubling. Of course, I can't guarantee that all the conservatives of the party will vote for your constitutional changes. That will depend to some extent on your policies, but the signatures, at least, are as good as gathered. Uh, signatures are not enough. We'll need all the votes from the USB. Well, that's politics for you. She smiled. I'll do what I can. Before we finish, there is one thing I need to say. I am concerned about the oligarchs in the state of our economy. I am worried they may influence you for their own benefit. We expect you to succeed where Alfonso failed in resisting their siren call. If you start privatizing healthcare or state-owned corporations, I doubt I can help you. Don't worry, that won't happen. I've already proven that's not going to happen. Good. She stood up. And thanks to Jablinks2 for following. Welcome to the party, pal. I believe I made myself clear. Thanks for stopping by, Mr. President. I hope you'll hold your promises. She extended her hand. Okay, great. But now I need to get back to my duties. Understand? I'll leave you to it. The conservative side was handled, but to get to the 150 signatures I needed, I would still have to deal with Albin Clavin and the reformist wing. I went outside. Sergei drove me back to the palace where I met Lucian and told him about the progress I made with Gloria. Okay, great. So it's all coming together, kinda. Um... Yeah, and speak of the devil. After our meeting with Gloria Tory and further discussions with the party in my cabinet, 
it was time to talk to Albin Clavin to get the reformist wing to support the proposal. I also plan to finally present a more fleshed out proposal and declare our agenda to the party after our meeting. <sighs> uh, okay. I don't remember what to do here. Uh, I walked into the left wing of the assembly and entered the quarters of the USP. When I reached the meeting hall, I saw many of our members conversing inside. After taking a glimpse inside, I went back into the corridor to look for the office of Albin Clavin, which was around the back of the place. When I reached this room, I knocked on the door and entered. Mr. President, welcome! The whole room was surrounded by bookshelves packed with files and papers. It was a small office with books and dossiers lying on every corner. It felt claustrophobic. On his gesture, I took a seat. Uh, how is everything going, Mr. Clavin? It's been busy. The party's been working very hard, Mr. President. Thank you for asking. How is it going for you in the palace? I'm feeling pretty good. That's great to hear. I wanted to express my gratitude for passing the Workers' Rights Act. It is one of the, my most comprehensive and successful political efforts. Uh, it was the right thing to do because our workers were suffering for decades. Indeed, the people will credit your administration and the party for a positive change in their lives. The businesses will share the burden with the state, but it is a change they will have to abide by. I have to say, the close collaboration between the palace and the party is going well. Looking forward to what we could accomplish with the reforms. Alvin smiled and knocked on wood. Anyway, sir, let's talk about the proposals. Thanks for coming here for my input, because there are some subjects where Gloria and I don't see eye to eye. What I didn't expect was a worsening of the current situation. Presidential decrees above statute law are not subject to judicial review. It would destroy the separation of powers. Huh. Um... Hmm. Yeah, the decrees need to be weaker, not stronger. How the hell do I play this guy? Uh... Huh. I mean, I'll just try to do what I did before. To truly reform the country, the president needs decrees not subject to review. Why can't the president work closely with the assembly? I suggest limiting the power of the decrees with an enabling act. The assembly should have some degree of control over a potential rogue president, which under this draft proposal also would have immunity for life once retired. And if you really care about further democratic reforms, we'll issue the enabling act. Uh, no, we're not doing any of this. I don't trust the assembly to give me the power to enact major reforms, though. I can't let the assembly control me. I think mean, that's... I thought you wanted to discuss a change. There must be another way. I have to... Oh, man, this has fallen away from me. I have to say that most of the progressives were already starting to wump to you. Your attempt at changing the constitution created a bit of excitement. One could dare say an excitement that hasn't been felt since the 30s. Yet there are some issues with the current status of the draft proposal, so we may need to contain our excitement a little longer. I suspect Miss Tory had a lot of... Oh, fuck. I need your support, Mr. Clavin. A fact I'm aware of. But at this point, even my support would not be enough. Tell me the issues. How can I get your support? Where to even begin? We have specifically asked for a change in the appointment of ministers. This is what the party was expecting. Yet I see our suggestion was completely ignored. They were not ignored, Mr. Clavin. Excuse me, but I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know what I can do for you even if I give you my full support. The party will not like this. Leave the rest of the party to me. I am asking now for your support. Your proposal will be crushed like this anyways. I'd rather have something tangible to support. I think you're pushing your luck too much, Mr. President. You know, this isn't the only issue. There's another one. 
Reformists were expecting a reform about the term limits. Why is that not included in the proposal? This is only my first term. It's too soon to bring term limits. So you want to use the flaws of the system for your own benefit. Could you tell me what is your priority with this proposal? I think he'd be into this. Limiting the legislative powers of the Supreme Court. And you're doing more than that, aren't you? Taking away the immunity of justices and giving the power to replace them to yourself. A worrying notion. Do you want me to believe that? He looked under the proposal. There might still... Okay, here it is. Oh, thank God. I haven't sweat in here. There might still be a way for me to get behind this. This is not enough, Mr. President. We could take another look over the draft, or perhaps there is something else you could offer me. Sure, I'll offer you something else. I'm all ears. How about a position in my cabinet? Uh, I think we can achieve a lot if we lead together. If you promise me the position of vice president. Very well. You can be vice president. Can I hold you to that promise? As long as I get your support. Good, then it seems we have a deal. I will talk to my guy shortly. I'll have those signatures soon. Don't botch it. I won't. Oh, that was tense as shit. But I think I, I got him. The meeting had exhausted me. Ah, I went to the restaurant of the assembly to get something to eat while conversing with the other members of our party. I saw Alvin talking to his people in the distance. After a while... Oh, God. <coughs> I'm gonna die. After a while, the preparations for the conference began, and I went back into the conference hall and prepared my notes for the speech I was going to make. I took time to get all the present members of the party inside the hall. Gloria Tori announced me from the stand. I walked up to the stand as everybody in the room started clapping. Alright, so I gotta get the party on board. How do I do this? Uh, talk about how great the USP is. Yeah. Brothers and sisters of United Swordland, I came here today to announce the agenda for the future of our country. I started my speech with the reasons of the changes to the Constitution. The people of Swordland have spoken. They blame our institutions and our systems and want change. Can you blame the people? Haven't we had enough with the flaws of our Constitution? We must listen to their wishes and get their trust in Swordland back. I paused, they started clapping, and continued. Uh... I'll do the USP. Always the USP. I brought attention to the people's protests and the slight decrease in the popularity of the USP. I explained how our proposal will only be beneficial for everybody. The moderates that sat in the Senate started applauding. Later, I explained the contents of the new constitution and asked for their full support for the proposal. Ask for their votes. We're not going to be heavy-handed here. The reformist wing on the left st stood up and started clapping loudly after Alvin Clavin made a sign. Soon after, most of the party members stood up and joined in. I saluted everybody in the room one last time and bid them farewell before they didn't stand. I walked outside the assembly and back into the palace. There it is. Reds under the bed saying, this is good. I have to agree. I'm, I'm very happy with how things are going. President meets the USP. Yes, yes, yes. Balance of power in Eastern Mercopa. Okay. And that's the start of chapter two. Well, shit. I think that's actually probably a good time to end it for tonight. A little earlier than usual, but uh, I want to keep the, the parts of these streams at least somewhat coherent so we don't start in the middle of, of stuff next time around. So let's uh, save this sucker. Bring back the HUD. Alrighty. 
thanks everyone so much for joining me here tonight. Again, ending a little sooner than usual, but uh, I don't know, I'll make it up by going longer next time or something. A lot going on these days, a lot of editing to do, a lot of videos coming out soon, so yeah. Alrighty, but uh, even though tonight's done, the streaming don't stop, I'll be back tomorrow for Stellaris Invicta. You know the drill by now, we're playing as the Antares Confederacy, a lot going on. We just defeated the Khan, now there's a whole galaxy to manage, it's a real mess. But uh, I think we can do it. And then, on Monday, probably nothing. We're still working with the guys over the Blunder Dome to decide what we're streaming next. Uh, we're thinking Warhammer Total War 2, doing a big campaign of that, so... If that doesn't start this Monday, maybe next Monday, maybe the Monday after that, who can who can say? And then uh, Wednesday, we continue our Hearts of Iron 4 campaign, Kaiserreich playing as the Union of Britain. The second Weltkrieg just started, and we're desperately trying to help out the French, so we'll see how that goes. And then, one week today, we continue the Reign of Terror in Suzerain. Oh boy, but uh, we gotta raid somebody, right? Let's see who else is doing stuff. And it would be easier to do if my internet just crashed. So let's, uh... Oh, come on. Is Chrome breaking on me here? That sucks. <laughs> oh, no. We might not be able to raid anybody. Man, the computer's having issues today. First the, uh, the Stream Deck and now Chrome. What's going on? All right, there it goes. Okay. Who the devil is streaming today? Uh, Helping Hans is playing Total War Warhammer, but as I recall, he usually ends his nights right around the same time as us. So if you raid him, that's not gonna go anywhere. Stellar Mish is playing Age of Empires 2. Yeah, let's raid Stellar Mish. Um, yeah, if you're not aware, Stellar Mish is a very good Age of Empires 2 player. Uh, I watch her streams quite often in the background here. She is, like, I mean, I thought I was okay at Age of Empires 2. I didn't have any, you know, notions that I was great or anything, but uh, turns out I'm way worse than I thought because she's excellent. What's, uh, what's a funny Age of Empires 2 taunt? Uh, Age of Empires 2. You need something funny to say. I mean, Wololo is... is is uh, standard, right? Uh, I don't know. Oh, raiding party. That That is on point. We're all going to yell out raiding party. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much for joining me here tonight. Uh, let's raid Stellar Mish. Everyone yell out raiding party, and uh, we'll get going. So, thanks again, folks. Once the raid... <laughs> Starts up, we'll uh, we'll call it for the night. Alrighty. Alright, guys. We'll uh, catch you next time. Have a good one.